Hi everybody, in this lesson, we're gonna look at the zeros of polynomials and how that relates to their factors. This is a huge idea when it comes to playing around with these polynomials we've been working with since February. So find the zeros of the quadratic function x squared minus 6x minus 16. Um, so let's do this algebraically. Let's do this algebraically. Let's say x squared minus 6x minus 16 equals zero. Well, if I wanna find the zeros, I'm gonna factor this expression. So let's try factoring this expression. What multiplies to negative 16 that adds to negative 6? So what multiplies to 16? 1 and 16, 2 and 8. There we go. That's how I'm going to get negative. That's how I'm going to get negative 6. X plus 2 and x minus 8. Negative 8, positive 2 gives me negative 6. So you could have made a box there too if you wanted to. But you end up with your 0. So those are my factors. I went from standard form. This is standard form. Standard form. And we went into factored form here. So the factors give me the zeros of negative 2 and positive 8. And you know that we could have checked those by going to our calculator and seeing where it hits the x-axis. But today is all about, all right, if I know my zeros, how do I work backwards? So write an equation of a quadratic function who has zeros of x equals negative 3 and x equals 4. So those are my zeros. I want to work backwards now and get my factors. Well, what factor, work backwards here, would give me x equals negative 3. Negative 3 and positive 3. So x plus 3 is my factor. If x equals 4, what's my factor that that came from? x minus 4 equals 0. So notice we can work backwards. If negative 3 is a 0, we can go get our factor of x plus 3. I left my refrigerator open and I had to go close it. So if I wanted to multiply these together, I could get the standard form polynomial. I could go from factored form back to standard form by saying x squared minus 1x minus 12 equals 0. That polynomial has those zeros. I solve that equation but I, I kind of went backwards. I gave you the zeros this time, and you worked backwards and gave me the original function. So the factor zero theorem is this important relationship that says x equals a is a zero if and only if, that means I can go both ways, x equals a is a zero if and only if x minus a is a factor. So x equals a is a 0 if x minus a, the opposite, this binomial here, is a factor. So ready? Let's do rapid fire here. If I have a 0 at x equals 2, what factor did that come from? That came from the factor x minus 2. Notice that zeros are numbers. Factors are binomials. Zeros are x equals 2. A factor is a binomial. Don't just say negative 2. A factor is a binomial x minus 2. If I have a 0 at 7, what factor did that come from? That came from x minus 7. If I have a 0 at negative 3, what factor did that come from? Well, that came from x plus 3. If I have a 0 at negative 5, that came from x plus 5. If I have a 0 at 0, you got choices here. You could say x minus 0. You could say x plus 0, right? Isn't that the same thing? Or you could just say x. x is one of my factors. And finally, if I have a 0 at 10, what's my factor? x minus 10. So it's this opposite relationship here. If your 0 is negative, your factor is going to have a plus. If your zero is positive, your factor is going to have a minus sign. So create a quadratic function written in standard form. Standard form is ax squared plus bx plus c. 
that has zeros, so x equals negative 5 and x equals negative 2. So if those are my zeros, what are my factors? What factors did that come from? Well, that came from x plus 5, and that came from x plus 2. Well, that's not standard form. I have to make a box over here. x plus 5, x plus 2. x squared, 5x, 2x, and 10. So my equation is really x squared plus 7x plus 10 equals 0. Hopefully you realize that this middle number is the sum, what adds to, and that last number is the product, what multiplies to. So that's how we can create a quadratic function that has those zeros. x squared plus 7x plus 10. That's standard form. This is factored form here. Ooh, this is not a parabola. This is not a parabola. This is some weird snaky-like function that kind of snakes across my page. This is called a cubic polynomial. This is a cube, x cubed polynomial. This is a cubic polynomial here. So based on the equation for p of x, write it for me in factored form. So I can leave it in factored form here. Well, if I want my factors, I need my zeros. And for any polynomial, how do I find my zeros? Well, I look on my x-axis. x equals negative 3, x equals 1, and x equals 4. So pause the video and see if you can come up with all my factors here. See if you could come up with all the factors of this polynomial by using that opposite relationship. I'll give you a hint. There's three factors to this polynomial. So if I get negative 3 as a 0, x plus 3 had to be a factor. If I get x equals 1, x minus 1 had to be a factor. And if x equals 4, x minus 4 has to be a factor. So that's my polynomial right there. So if I know my zeros, I can work backwards and get my factors. That's the whole idea of this lesson, and we're going to keep practicing that a couple more times, and it's almost done. So a polynomial has the factors of x, x minus 1 and x plus 6. So these are my factors. My factors are x, x minus 1, and x plus 6. So if those are my factors, what are my zeros? My zeros set each one equal to zero. x equals zero, x equals one, and x equals negative six. So these here are my zeros. That's what I'm looking for. Well, let's look at this first one. One, two, three, four, five, negative six, zero, and positive one. This guy looks good. That could definitely be the graph because it has those zeros. What do we have here? Negative 1, 0, and 6. Ah, that's no good. I want 0, 1, and negative 6. This is a parabola. This only crosses through twice. This only crosses through twice. It doesn't cross through 0 here, so that's no good. 1, 2, 3, 4, and then negative 6. 0 and 1. This one's also good. So it looks like these two, these two parabolas here are, no, sorry, not parabolas, those two cubic polynomials here, the first one and the fourth one, are my answer. So there's more than one polynomial that has these zeros. You could stretch them, you can flip them, but it's, it's those zeros that the factors determine. The factors are directly related to the zeros. Last one, find the zeros of this polynomial. So I'm going to cheat here. I could do this by factoring. I could say what multiplies to 21 and adds to negative 10. I could do this and say a negative 7 and negative 3. Well, if those are my zero, those are, sorry, those are my factors. Those are my factors. What are my zeros? 2, 7, and 3. Those are, that's the answer. But watch this, guys. I can just type this into my calculator. I can just type this into my calculator. I don't know if I have my calculator up, so I'm going to copy it over. So I'm going to go to y equals and type in x minus 2, parentheses, x squared minus 10x plus 21. 
And if I graph it, let me drag this over because I don't think my calculator is sharing with you guys right now. There we go. So I graph that function. I didn't do any work. All I did was I typed into y equals. I'm all about doing less work, guys. What are my zeros? Well, where do I find my zeros? For the 18th millionth time on the x-axis. Where on the x-axis? x equals 2, x equals 3, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, x equals 7. And if I looked at the table, I would get 2, 3, and 7. So the huge idea, if x equals 3 is a 0, x minus 3 is a factor. It's that opposite relationship that connects my zeros to my factors. Hopefully you have a good understanding with zeros because they're going to come back and find you in Algebra 2 in the beginning of that year when we look at polynomials all over again. See you guys soon.